So your your next lab assignment is we're gonna build a, a mini a collection mini game. So we've already worked with hey here are pawns, here are um, things that we can interact with. Now we're gonna build things out um, into a, a mini game. So basically we are going you're gonna use a third person um, blueprint uh, template, uh, and you can still use the one that you, you've been working with. Uh, but we'll we'll create a new scene for the mini game. Download the mesh. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll show, we'll import that. Um, if you have, let's see, I turned up Unreal. They are going to do um, the. They are going to set up. They are going to um, in the the, the um, PowerPoint slides. They're going to show up. Basically, they're going to have you basically set up a something to be collectible. Um, that's the multiplayer one. Guess what's going on in the multiplayer class? Um, And this lab might actually go through multiple weeks, just so, just so you know. Uh, it depends how far, how much uh, they're asking you to do. So don't worry about due dates at the moment if, if we go longer. All right, so, so do yourself a favor. Start and just make a, uh, make a folder called Collection Game. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this, this static mesh. And I'm just going to bring it in as is. Don't worry about any of the settings. It will it will it will gill about um, the fact that the you know the mesh doesn't doesn't have any smoothing groups. It doesn't it doesn't have any, it, it's um, a low poly asset, so it doesn't have smoothing groups. So don't ignore that warning. Gonna bring in a material, and basically we're gonna just basically I'm gonna toss this out. No, just delete it, and then I'm gonna go into the static mesh. Make it small. I think it is small. Uh, go to its details. So material. Um, right now we need to. I'm just gonna put uh, the gold material on it. So I'm going to do 100. I'll keep that there. Uh, we'll close this. <coughs> right. um, things to be aware about. So I'm actually, actually, I'm going to back up my collection file. Um, I'm actually going to go in. I'm going to create. Under game play, uh, we're going to make a new blueprint class, um, and we're going to use we're going to create a game mode base. Okay, so in our documentation, we've been seeing game mode, game mode, game mode, game mode, and the, we've got to talk a little bit about uh, Unreal history here for a moment. Um, essentially, this this engine comes from Unreal the game and Unreal tournament. In Unreal tournament, there there was the game mode. When we got to UDK, um, basically UDK had an Unreal demo. The problem with the game mode class is that it had a lot of uh, pieces of information uh, and 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 um, code and other things that were related to Unreal Tournament. 
And so ultimately it was at some point to make game the game mode class more generic, they split it between two. So anything that was still Unreal related stayed in the game mode class and they created a new sub a new parent class of that called game mode base. So that's why that you see that here. Okay, so we've got game mode base. And this is gonna be our coin. Sorry, uh, collect collectible uh, game mode. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna just open this up. And for the most part, uh, the big thing about the game mode, um, the, this section right here, the classes, are the biggest piece that, that is in play. Um, what is the HUD class? Uh, uh, player controller, uh, the, the default pawn class. So these are de default classes are being set here. It's one of the things that you'll, you'll want to put into play. Um, for our purposes, as it is for right now we will we will set the HUD here at, at this point so uh, I'm gonna I'm, I am gonna save this not we don't need to make any changes as of yet right now um, I am going to file save the current level as and I'm gonna go to my collection game and I'm just gonna call this This will allow me to go in and do things like delete everything in here because we deleted out. I'm just going to place a player start here. Built, built for this lap, for this, for this area. Uh, I will take the alpha. Okay. So we're going to start with our default player. And I'm going to go back setting and just say set this back to just the standard HUD. Um, we will um, undo most of these. So the big the big one right now is that uh, game override I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna go to my collectible game mode. I'll set that there. Um, and then under default pawn I do still want to use the BP third person character. Let's just bring that up just one moment. This is in the third person. third person. So I want to note that up in the corner, you will see that there's the parent class. It's a parent class character. Remember, character is a specialized class of pawn. Pawn is a specialized class of actor. So there's an inheritance chain. Um, for our purposes right now, there's really not much. Um, we don't actually need fire. But basically, it's got jump, move, uh, and look. And it 
it's setting up mapping the, you know, the mapping here. So basically, all we this is what the character we need. So we can run around, we can jump. All right. And this is pretty much what the, your blue, third person blueprint is doing for you when you play the game. All right. Let's start with we are going to create. A blueprint class and this is going to be an actor and this is going to be our and we use our BP underscore uh, I'm gonna be underscore collectible so one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to start so we're gonna build out a collectible class one of the things that we'll do later on is I'm actually going to inherit from this collectible class to make other classes, so we'll we'll change out what um, what it looks in other classes. Um, it could do, and we'll set up things that we can um, override, inherit, and change in the child classes to do what we, uh, to do things. Um, basically, allow the other child classes to do other things, such as hey, I'll play a sound. I will spawn a part of the system type type scenario. the PowerPoint slides just so that we have a better understanding of everything we need to do. Uh, it's showing you how to use the game mode, define rules of the game, um, how to use macros, custom events, functions, demonstrate user timers in a game. We've, we know how to build a timer. Convert rules of the game into blueprint code, organize macros, custom events, and functions. Draw some information using the HUD class and define timers using functions and custom events. I think the HUD's going to draw in a, a silly way. So they're using BP statue. I'm calling it collectible because essentially um, what I'm going to do is I'm, going to, I'm basically going to this statue right here is in starter assets. BP guide game mode. This is the game mode. This is the collectible game mode class. And then BP guide HUD. This is going to, and this will be BP uh, collectible HUD essentially. So it's a drawing the time score player. Um, later on, we will we will look at U UMG. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna follow how they're gonna set set this up this week. But ultimately, later on, what's gonna end up happening is that we're gonna build using widgets as a properly. So we're still not. So that's. So here are the rules. Player must collect the small statues appear on the screen before time run out. Initial time is set to 30. Game is over when there's no time remaining. For every five statues, the player increases. Uh, player level increases 15 seconds are added for, to the time. Player starts at level one. Maximum blood player reaches fit level five. Uh, we're we're going to ignore this a little bit. Um, there are, we are going to build the statue. Um, basically, there are three statues in the scenario that change position periodically. We'll do this as a child. So I want to get get the game, you know, get game up and running. We want to get the statue in, build the statue, get it in. Uh, when a player gets a statue, another one spawns. So we'll we'll talk about how spawning works. Uh, score for the stat statue collected is determined by expression ten times the level. And then uh, time score and player level that was drawn on the screen. So that that we'll definitely do. So what they want to do is basically they want to add a couple values. So level score, uh, statue count, time, and then a boolean that is game over. So let's actually go go in and actually go. And then we will go down to our variables, um, and then these are all control trees. Uh, I'll start with actually the first one, which is game over. 
No, one of the things is that you can set categories. Um, for our purposes, we want uh, collection game B being our category that we want to put all these variables in. Use this to your benefit to, to, to sort things out. If you've got multiple multiple deck categories, like you've got a lot of variables, make multiple categories. Sort them between the categories. I'm going to go and add another variable. Uh, this is going to be level. And this is going to be integer. And we'll come back and do default values. We've got to go and we've got to create the, these these first. Um, give it collection game. I'm just going to press plus a couple times. Uh, level, scores, deck. There we go. So this one's going to be score. go back and I'm going to and we can actually grab grab these and move them into the category right here so so good so far um, I'm gonna go compile and now we can go back uh, game over this should be not checked so when this is checked this is true the game is over level we'll start that at uh, it should actually start at Score should not start at zero. Collection count should start at zero, and time should start at thirty. So basically, we're going to count down. When time hits zero, the game is over. And then to to have these uh, default values take effect, uh, recompile again. And then Control Shift S, save everything. So we've got everything that we need right now to set up the, 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 the game mode. So one of the things they want you to do is they want you to create a macro. Uh, a macro is just basically there are functions and there are macros. Um, and I'm going to go, we're going to use a macro, and this is going to... start game. And it looks very much, there could be, again, um, there are for inputs, uh, this is going to be weird, we will an input parameter we're going to call call this in we're going to set the type to exact. So with, so it, it execution pin. No, no, this is why, so this is, this is, so basically we now have a pin in to this macro. This macro, so with macros could have, basically could be, you could have an input in, you wire it in and you can wire out. Uh, again, output, again, the outputs could, we could also have a, um, an out node. So when we go, let's go look at the event graph now. Because essentially off of begin play, we want to wire in this. And this is, again, the macro. Um, cool. It's a specialized form of a function, essentially. It is doing something. Um, I could have just a macro that is out. So think of it as like a mathematical calculation. I can throw that all. You know, I, we did again um, with the path runner. We did a the a minus b calculation. We could have done that as a macro. 
and the node would have just been an L, would have been the uh, the vector, essentially. So, um, so for the purpose of start game. So essentially, the macro. Yeah, actually, I actually don't need the F. We're gonna we're gonna. Um, but we want to set. Grab. Um, set game over, to be false. We're gonna set the level to one. Default values. Uh, score. Should be zero. Uh, collection count. That should be zero as well. Hit time. Then we want another, we're going to create a function. name. Again, right in here, the function name is going to be clock. Time is going to be one. Not ten. One. Uh, and it's going to loop. this now. So this is basically starting the game. Um, they have an event here, begin play. Uh, the other, we'll be able to see it later on in the subject for a moment. Uh, they want a custom event. And so we're going to just add an event. Add custom event. It's going to be restart game. Basically, going to basically wire that in that way for the play as well. So we have an event. We can actually now call this call function restart game. So later on, we, we have now a node that that we can now use, that we can call this event. And that's the purpose of, the, the, of these custom events, is that we can create, you know, we can call this, you know, it, like, again, another, another way to, to, of code reuse. You know, we can call this node, and then we'll just kick off this event. Um, What they want us to do, what uh, again the what we're going to do is when we hit return. So basically, um, in, the, in the slides, what they what what they're going to show you is if, if you hit return. So I'm going to delete this here. We're going to go back to our third person character. Uh, so down so down here. What they want is basically keyboard. So the first thing that we need to do, um, essentially, 
Um, we need to get. So when this, we need to get the game mode. All right. Now, this is going to return back a reference in game mode base reference. So the issue then is that while this this is um, there we go. So while this is game a parent the parent class is game mode base. We're a child. So when we're getting, so this is the thing about inheritance that we need to we're, we're going to start working with is when you make children classes they are of their parent class. So like we made a collective we're going to make children of the collectible class. One of the things that we're that we're going to do one of the things is that if you have a reference in your parent class you need to then cast it down to the child. And that is going to go back to third person. Um, this is going to be off press, and this is going to be cast to collectible game code mode. And we'll plug in the game mode here, and then it will it will try and cast it. If it fails, um, so there's there's this is what happens if this is this the exact node that happens when it succeeds. And this is what happens when it fails. Um, sometimes you need the reference in that other class. So that's that as a game collect game collect mode, this is the reference of the game mode in that class type. So this is going from a parent reaching down to one of its child. Um, Um, and we need to go to as collectible game mode because the restart game function is there. So this is a func this is a this is the macro in so we're calling the macro in the game mode that we created. So that's why we need this reference here. Let me just go off. If I go off and try and do restart game, it's going to ask, hey, collectible game mode, there's a, an event here. And it's going to be like, restart game, target self. This will fail. Because self here is referring to the BP character class, which is not the class that we're looking for. Again, we just want to plug in this class right here so that, the, so this is, so we can retarget. A lot of the time that you're going to, you're not going to, it's going to be self, but this is, Specific cases where we're using a node in another class, make sure the target is, is pointing to the correct uh, reference of the class. And we're going to go back to collectible game mode. And we're going to go to uh, restart game. Um, I'm actually going to go in right here and I'm going to put a print. And this is a, again, development node. But I'm going to go back, I'm going to compile. And we're going to go back to the game, the game itself. We'll save everything. And then I'll hit return. And you can see that that node, that, that what I just wrote just kicked off. So we've got a way to restart the game um, as we need to. I hit, I hit return. Oh, so I hit return. It, it calls restart. So it gets the collectible game mode in the cl its class type and calls restart game. In the collectible game mode, here's the restart game node. This is what's getting called. It's printing the string and then doing the, this node. That's the restart. That's basically setting up the game. So let's just go into the clock. And basically what we want is we want to take time. Um, uh, we want to get time. And I'm going to decrement. So this so this is a quote so
So the so basically these two nodes are equivalent to basically if you're subtracting one, you can use the minus minus operator. If you're adding just one, you can use the plus plus operator. And that's what this is right here. This is basically equivalent of these two nodes. I'm gonna delete these for the because I won't just use the decrement. And then the next question I, I have is um, it's an if. So if this value is less than or equal to zero, um, if that's true, then game over should be true. So I want, I'm just going to make another variable right here. So I want to, I want to store this. This is a time handler structure. So this would be uh, lock time handle. And then we're going to look for time handle structure. So now that we've we've so now we're storing that, and again I'm going to put this into my collection game. So now basically I've just created a variable that we can set. Now that we know that this is going on, um, the clock can go. We can go back to our clock function. If game is over, we can go get the clock handle, and then I'm just going to, I'll just pause it. So I'll pause, pause the timer so that uh, the clock isn't, isn't running. And this will allow us to, you know, basically say, hey, um, if our, in, in our game mode, if, if game over, don't do things. This is so that time doesn't keep, this doesn't keep getting reset every time, you know, the clock doesn't keep re resetting. So this is basically what I'm doing here. And then this is something um, extra that I don't think, I don't think is in the slides. Oh, oh, here we go. They have instead, um, they're using clear timer by function name. Here we go. But yeah, we could have done this. Uh, I can put this. I go back to start game. Yeah, okay. Good. So two ways of doing things. We could have we could have used the the, the uh, handle structure. Uh, again, we're setting and stopping by function name.
let's go back and let's go to our collectible right now. Um, let's, so let's, let's get something something in the scene that we can interact with. So we're going to start by creating, uh, let's go to content draw. brought the statue in. Uh, the one thing that we are going to do is we're going to go to the statue and we are going to change this to so that this is easier to see. As, as, as a, this will make it easier to see than the, the glass material that has. Um, yeah, so I'm not um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to add a collision. And I'm going to use I'll use the sphere collision. And this again, I'm going to the sphere radius. Uh, I'll do 250. So the thing about the, I'm going to set this as the root. So again, you don't have to have that default uh, scene root anymore. You can you can make things uh, specific. I want the sphere because essentially all my gameplay is going to come off the sphere. And the statue here is basically I'm going to rename this the model. Sphere, uh, we can go to our event graph. Um, we don't, we don't. We're not going to do anything on tick. We're just sitting there. Um, we're not going to use actor begin overlap. Or I don't think I have a begin play. But we can. But with the sphere, we will have a uh, call uh, event on the sphere collision. So on component begin overlap. Remember that, um, let me just go back to my content draw. Yeah. So the first thing that we want to ask is grab the other actor. What, what, what actor overlapped with us? And we want to cast that to VP third person character. And if this succeeded, if it failed, then we don't want to do anything. Then it, it's not a, it's not an actor that we care about. Um, on the other side, um, if it succeeds, um, then we know that the player has picked us up. So there are two things that there are two functions that I'm, I do definitely want to set up. Uh, there's an override here on destroy. So this is this is the event destroyed. Uh, what 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 do we do when we are destroyed? No, that's not where we're we're not doing that here. Um, well, we'll come back. Uh, one of the things that we are going to do is I'm going to actually let's go back to our game game mode. Uh, we need to create a function. And this is going to be um, call it add to collection. And the input basically we're going to ask for is a going to be of the type um, VP. So we're going to ask, hey, um, new item. So 
So basically, what what got collected? All right. So let's let's save this compile. Let's go back to our collectible. So the first thing that we want to do, um, we know that that, that we we're going to get our game mode. Pass that to collectible game mode. Um, and then add as the actor, we're going to add to collection. And then the new item. Going to be this item. So we now now we now know we now have a call to the game mode to say, hey, a way to add to to the um, add to the basically. Let's go back to our game mode. So now we have what. Basically, uh, we can add to the collection, and we have the new what what was brought in. What does this allow us to do? I'm actually going to break from the slides, and I'm going to add in a, our collectible. I'm going to add a new variable, a score value, and this will be an integer. I'm going to make this instance editable. Uh, I'll compile, and I'm going to make this a score of 1 to start off. We now have a way to, again, this could have been, I'm actually going to want to make this a score of 10 for hex. Let's go, let's go arcade, arcade style, uh, 100. Arcade style, style, add two zeros to the end of your number. Because it, it looks cooler. One, 100 feels better than one point. So now we can go back. We can literally, now that we've got that, we'd be like, hey, score. Uh, we can set the score. Um, get score. I'll put it this way. Um, off of new item, we can get its score. We're just going to just print, and then again, one of the things that it would here we can use was the append string node. So we're going to grab this and plug it in there. It's going to do a string conversion for us. Um, Um, basically, this is for so because right now I don't have the HUD up and working. So what I'm doing basically is printing out onto the screen that hey, we've 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 added you know when we, this gets called, the I, the item was uh, was being kept collected. Um, when when basically right now our HUD we don't have a HUD. So to see that this this that the score is actually being um, actually let's actually take um, not that score. All right. So basically, when so instead of show uh, basically when we collect it, we're gonna print the total points to to the screen. This is right now because we don't have a HUD up running. We will remove these three nodes in a little bit because we'll have our HUD up and running instead. So let's go down and let's go back to our our game. And 
Let's go to the content draw. I'm just going to just drop down a couple of these. And I'm probably going to change this to, I'm probably going to change this to a capsule collider. But we'll keep this for right now. Uh, duplicate. 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 So, I'm going to press play. You can see there are the statues. And I made a mistake with the collectible. So, the issue is with the sphere. Right now, it's with its collision. Um, we want overlap events. We want overlap all day. Uh, not overlap. We want to change it to a trigger. File. Go back to the game. Oh, I'm not destroying. Let's just make sure that and I sh should basically um, let's do do destroy the actor there. And we'll just just do a print here. There we go. Uh, it was pro I was I'm not destroying the actor is probably one of the part of it. Uh, the I it wasn't set to a trigger and it wasn't I it wasn't destroying the actor. So you can see here we go. Boom boom. So total points five hundred. Or what? Uh, oh, uh, basically it's, the, it's in the collectible. I have destroy on here at the end. Um, one of the things that we can actually, um, so again, we're going to, basically we're basically going to set up basically a simple, uh, they're going to have you do like, uh, like there's a statue collected method. Don't, don't follow that in the PowerPoint thing. I actually got to I actually need to go through and update these slides. Um, so let's talk. Let's, so we've got we've got this statue up and going. We will come back and we will add things to things that we can do here. Um, so that when that our children, so that children classes can do um, handle their things differently. Um, but let's 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 push forward. Let's jump to the, the the HUD. So let's go back to our content draw. And we're going to make another class, um, and we're going to go into all the classes and search for a HUD. Select that, and this will be uh, BP. Now, the way that we're going to work with the HUD this, 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 in this lab uh, is going to be slightly different. It's going to be different later on. And later on, we'll, we'll use what's called widgets to build out what will be the, our HUD. Uh, but so let's start with the HUD itself. And we're going to jump, jump to the event graph. And the first thing that we want to do is create a variable of our, so this is our uh, game mode. So what they want to do is they're going to create a variable of the game, what we're going to call game mode. 
And it's going to be our collection. There we go. So our collectible game mode is the is the object reference that we want to set here. And on begin play, essentially there basically is we're getting our get game mode. I'm going to cast to collectible game mode. And then we're just going to set this. And what they're doing here is basically is they're basically creating a, a cached version copy. So basically this variable is this in action, this, these two nodes. Um, and this is just so for convenience sake. So that later on, um, as we do things with the game mode, as we ask for different variables, um, basically it will it will allow us to not have to do this over and over and over again. So uh, we do not need uh, these here. The event that we are using to draw, and you've used it already, is the event receive draw HUD. And we're going to then go off and we're going to use draw text and we're going to use the HUD version of the draw text. So you should see target is HUD. So let me bring up the PowerPoint slide just one moment. And right now we're looking at, hey, we want our score to be yellow. Our time is, tw is in red. The, the score uh, player level is in blue. Um, I'm actually not using level in this case. So let's start with. So in this case, our text, we're going to draw this out here. Um, our text, we're going to use string append. And this is going to be score. We're going to use a space. And then we'll get our game mode. And we'll use get score. integer to a string. Um, we're going to move this down. Screen um, X is, we're going to do 30. I'm going to use screen size uh, Y at 50. Um, 50 we found from our previous lab being out of the way when you know when the game starts this will be out of the way we'll do a scale of two and this is one of those things we're gonna scale here it's gonna look horrible uh, we can select a font asset if we want to if no default font is chosen I'm just gonna use uh, Flipboard um, yeah Flipboard And now we need to go back to our level. And we need, in this case, we're going to override the HUD class. Actually, we're not going to override the HUD class today. We're going to go to the collectible game mode. And we are going to select the viewport. And down here, we're going to set, actually, we're going to do our uh, HUD collection. So what we're doing now is we're saying is that, let me bring this out so you can see this a little bit better. So we're saying that this is the default HUD for this game mode. And so now that because we're using this particular game mode, um, let me just save everything. And 
yeah, I'm using my collectible game mode. I'm actually going. You can see that it over it. It's going. It set that to that value because this is this is what the the uh, this is what the selected game mode is using. So if I press play, you can see now I've got my score up here. So cool. So far so good. Let's go back to our HUD. Um, the next piece that we are going to need. I'm going to do. Next one's going to be time, and we will set this to basically red. didn't do is I didn't move it. So let's go back to the HUD and see. And we'll set the screen to, let's say 150. 150, see where it goes. I moved it down. And actually, actually that will actually be um, in the slides. So that they're going to have you go across. I'm just going to go, so this was 50. So we're going to jump down the values by 50. And you see that the time is coming down. And you will see it come down to zero. So if I move one around, you can see that I can't get those points. So I can go back and take out that print. So we've hit zero. So Let's go back, and so we've got, this is, so what I really want is actually, I'm going to create a, two, I'm going to create two, uh, two functions. Um, draw game HUD, draw game over HUD. And so I'm going to go back to my event graph. I'm actually going to grab all of these nodes, I'm going to copy them, and I'm going to go back to the draw game HUD. I'm going to, couldn't paste the event, that's fine, but I'm going to go in, I'm going to copy, I'm going to plug that in here. So this function basically is doing all, the, going to do all the drawing. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to, I'm going to grab you as a node. to game over HUD and basically this is going to be game over this will be at 50 and I'm going to just jump this up to a scale of 4 so now that we've got these two functions to help us we can go back and take these these nodes out because we we can actually now go uh, we'll keep the game mode and we will actually say um, we can get game over and we'll plug that into an if. If it's if game over is true, we'll just draw the game over HUD. And if it's false, then we're going to draw the game HUD. Mode and I'll go to time. Uh, we're going to 
gonna start a set this to, to be essentially able to do 10 seconds. Compile, run the game. You'll see that, that it starts down with 10. And off we go. Hit return. It resets the score. Now the one thing it's not doing right now is it's not resetting the statues. In fact, we can start, one of the things we can look at um, is this objects. Showing you how basically how to drive the game at this point. So one of the things they're doing here is they have a function called init statue. Um, what basically init statue is basically is it's going to teleport. It's going to teleport the uh, statue to another location. Um, Let's go back and let's let's say let's go back to our collector. Um, we're going to make a function. We're going to call this on taken. So when we're taken, basically what we're going to do is we're going to teleport. Uh, let's go. Let's go back to our game collection map. Let's 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 just take a look at the the the, the detail settings here. So we're like fifteen thousand units out here. Uh, let's take a look where zero is. So zero zero. Now this is going to be important for our purposes right now. Uh, this is the origin of where everything is. I'm going to move these objects. Grab my player start. I'm gonna move them over to the platform. Okay, 150. So what I'm what I'm saying here is I'm gonna have a small. So when I basically when these so basically I'm gonna make these teleport. So I'm gonna make I'm gonna make. make these teleport. So I'll press play. You can see that, hey, here are the, here are the statues. And I'm going to go in and now that we've got HUD working, let's go back to our collectible. Now let's look at what do we get in the collection. 
So these nodes right here, printing out the total points, we can get rid of now because we've got the HUD working. All right, so rather than destroy actor, I'm going to call this function called pawn taken. Actually, I'm going to leave, leave, and I'm going to go into on taken. And actually, for this one, um, on taken, I'm going to actually destroy the actor. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to collect on, so let's just make sure I've got everything saved. So we're back, so basically we're back to where we were before. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the B, uh, the BB collection where I'm going to save it again. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a child blueprint class. And this is going to be BP pillar. And I'm going to go into the pillar and I'm going to go to the model. And this is going to be. V pillar square 04. All right. First thing I need to do is I need to make this So I'm going to go in and I'm going to and change the so I change the stack mesh and we change the, you know these are, are context sensitive. So you know I've gone in and I've changed now the mesh, and I can go and compile, and then I can go to my game and I can go in and drop in pillars now. So I'm actually going to go in, I'm going to go to the pillars. So I don't need the HUD collection. I don't really need the game right now. Uh, or the third person character. Let's go to the pillar. Um, so again, I score right here. Again, we go back to the collectible. We looked at score. We made score at, at, at instance edible. So we can go now to the pillar and be like, set the value to, I'm going to set this to 25. And the reason 25 is so, because it'll, it'll stand out. Uh, but also, we're going to, this is, we're going to teleport this. The way we're going to do this, basically, so we have override functions. There is a on taken. And this is, you can see, it's BP collectible. Like, so this is what, what we're overriding what. So this is parent on taken. So this is, hey, run what the parent's doing. We're not going to do that. There are cases where this is, this is what we want. But in our case, we want to change completely how on taken is work, works. So we're going to delete this. Um, I'm actually going to create a function called teleport. Just to make our lives, just, just to make our, our lives easier in terms of uh, to keep the code sim simplified.
support object. Skip uh, taken. So on taken is going to use the teleport object. And essentially, we are going to use the uh, teleport. Uh, here we go. So basically, it is destination. Of where where are we going to go, and what is the rotation? Uh, set zeros. So don't worry about rotating it. But here is a there is a make vector. It's going to basically look looking for an X, Y, and Z. So let's go back to our game. Just look right here. We know that the Z is going to be zero. So all that we are setting is basically a X and a Y value. Um, we want to. I'm going to grab U, and we know that we're going to press it up against this pillar for right now. So we know that this pillar. Is two hundred by is two hundred by two hundred. So I'm gonna go put this at two hundred, make it two hundred on this side. So we know this is a search search object at two hundred. So we don't want this. We don't want to teleport under two hundred. How far do we want to go? Let's pull you out. We'll say a thousand. Five hundred is probably for again. These are the teleporting ones, so we know that we we're in a range of two hundred to five hundred. Okay, so let's go back to our our pillar, um, and we know we're, we're so basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a random float um, in range. We know that the minimum value is two hundred. Max will go. Go 600. Go a little bit more. And we know that we will plug that into the X. And we basically the same thing. We're going to plug that into the Y. Um, One more thing. I'm going to do. Um, I'm, going to write, I'm going to make an event uh, function for this. This is um, this will have an output, uh, which will be a float. And this is going to basically, we're going to basically get So basically, we're just going to use a random bool. Uh, if it's true, then the sign will be one. Uh, 
uh, whether we're going we're to get a 1 or negative 1. Because uh, I'm going to go compile this, let's go back to our teleport object. And what I'm going to do is basically, well, let's break this for a moment. Break, 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 break. Um, so I'm going to do the random sign. This is where a, the, a macro would have been more useful. Uh, the output, in this case, the output float sign. So by making so what I so sorry, uh, so what I wanted to do is so here's random sign. I turned this and made this in uh, pure. Basically, it's like uh, get get this, get that. Basically, I don't need to plug it into the have it uh, into the exact. Go back to my teleport object. So what I'm let me break this link, break this link. Grab these two values, and I'm going to multiply them together. So the purpose here is that I want to grab. I'm going to grab. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm making sure I have a full around 200. So I'm going to compile and save everything. Back to the collection now, and I'll go grab
teleported over there. One thing that the odd thing, if I was inside, if it, if it teleported to where I am already. Here we go. We've got a game again. They've got some weird. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go through the the slides um, this this week. Um, I'm gonna clean clean them up a little bit. But here is. I'm showing you here how to. And part part of the issue is. Let's go back to the collectible. The, the big issue is. Um, I want to go add a capsule. Um, and I'm going to get rid of this, this sphere. Yes. I'm going to get rid of this. And we're going to go to here and in the black. So again, plug that in here and the other actor the object. Uh, let's go back to my viewports. Actually, gonna make. I'm gonna flip this around because I want to be able to move this up. Tighter, closer, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So I'm going to make use the, the, that little, so I've got less of an area of, of what I'm touching. Um, to go back to my pillar now, look at the viewport. And that's because the model... We gotta go to collision and basically cut it to four. All right, let's go back again. Let's go back to add a scene. the collision to the root. So model collision root. Uh, let me go back to the pillar. Uh, compile. Save. So this, this.
so the issue is value size is equal It's doubling up at the moment. But here is, we're just destroying the actor here. Uh, in the other case, of the pillar, again, we overrid the on taken to teleport the object. Um, again, I'm going to go through the slides. I'm going to take out references to the level. Uh, the, they've got a function init statue where they're teleporting the statues themselves. That'll do that. <laughs> um, I want you to, again, I, uh, I'm going to go through and update them, talk about inheritance, how, um, you know, on taken is being used. Again, one of the things, you know, we can teleport the object and we can um, play sound at location. Use compile since it is a safer way. So I'll go, and now that I've done that, I can go back to the game and I go press play. So the other thing that we can go back to the collectible, you know, this is destroy actor. Um, this has um, before before we do that, what we can do is uh, on their location, and it'll be the explosion. Uh, we will play sound at location. So just, just by that, we've added some 
juice to our game to make it more interesting. Do you go rag uh, uh, I don't know how to set that. That we'll have to take a look at another time. That would be something to set up. But this is kind of what I'm looking for you to do. Like, run around, pick things up, have different collectibles. That's the big thing is that you should have different collectibles. Um, didn't use the level. Again, I'm going to take out references to, to the level. Um, it's basically like, it's a time game. Like, as, you know, one of the things that we could do, let's make another collectible. So this is our base class. Let's... Um, Create child blueprint class. Um, this is going to be DP time boy. So let's go through our our starter content. Pops. What would be So um, in this case, we're going to go to the model and we're going to set this to none. Uh, clear it. Because for our purposes, we're going to go in. We're basically going to view. We're going to. I'm just going to add a sphere. So let's do a sphere. rotation
Unreal uses a rotator. Uh, we're going to rotate around the Y axis. So this is uh, this fly by three sixty. A basic rotation. Uh, compile, go back to my collection game, and then we'll go and drop the time orb in. It's not rotating. But we'll, we'll worry about that later on. But the purpose of the time orb in this case is that we're going to go and functions, we're going to override the on take in this case. Um, we are going to use the parent on taken, so it will blow up. Uh, but this is where we're going to go to get the game mode. And we're going to go back to the game mode just quickly. We're going to basically create a function um, add, add time. And it will basically have an input. Time. Okay, go back to the game. So get game mode. Uh, as collectible game mode, add time function be created. I'm going to go back to my collectible game mode just for one moment, and we're going to go back to the start game, and I'm going to set, put this back to 30. Go compile, save everything, go to the collection game mode, press play, you can see the time has been ticking down, if I pick it up, and my problem is, is that Collision is not set to be, is not equipped with a trigger. Uh, these, these components See it added time. Let me put a couple more of these into the map. You 
see that time did increase as I picked those up. And in theory, again, right now for, for again, I'm using the parent on taken here. So this is, again, an example of, hey, I can use what the parent's doing. Now I'm doing it for, for sake of time. I'd go in and do a different effect, different sound, whatnot, uh, remove, and then remove the object itself. But I'm just doing this here just so that I can just show you that, hey, I can reuse what the parent is doing as well. So We've gone pretty long. It's about, it's uh, uh, 10 minutes out for class. It's about to end in a few minutes. Um, I am gonna. I'm gonna update the slides. I'm gonna re again remove references. The, there's a couple couple things that it's doing that's funky. Um, so uh, expect expect to see the updated slides like this weekend. Um, definitely for your lab for Monday, the slides will be updated to reflect some of the new things. It reflect also also reflect the inheritance that we're doing. Yeah, we created a collectible class. And based on the collectible class, we were able to do different things. And this is what's called the term that we're using here is called polymorphism. Yeah, we have one, we have a cl collection of classes that can do different things based on different properties, different things, different overridden that we've we've set up. So, any questions before I stop and let you go? Um, you said earlier, don't worry about the blue grid. On this this one, this yeah, one don't is. don't worry. This could be a two week lab. This is this is I will see how people are. Um, I may it may be that the due date will be a two week, and I just basically just lecture again next week. So this is one of those. We'll see how how you progress through this. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to stop the recording here.